Agents Podcast. Okay, welcome back, Ooh. Lab Coach Nation, to another episode of the Lab Coat Agents Podcast. And we have got a good one today. Uh, I have met this guest, oh, all of about 30 seconds ago, uh, more like three minutes, but uh, I digress. He is going to be a wealth of knowledge, and I am looking forward to grilling him. I'm just going to give you a few snippets from what he sent me and what I've kind of found on him. Uh, Mike Berland, who is the founder and CEO of research data and analytics firm Decode M. And I'm, I'm kind of reading this, Mike. I don't do this often, but it was good. So I'm taking some bits from it. He's an expert on how people think and behave, such as consumers and decision makers. I say this, Ms. Mr. and Mrs. Realtor, because this is important to you. And this is during good times and uncertain times. He is the author of a book called Maximum Momentum, How to Get It, How to Keep It. And we are going to talk today about some of the things that he specializes in. One is data, how to dissect it, how to use it to your advantage, as well as he, has, he is someone who's been talking a lot about uh, the pandemic and how we are going to come out of it here, uh, hopefully in the very near future, and hopefully how you will be capitalizing on what the future holds. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Mr. Mike Berland. Hey, Jeff, thanks for having me. I like to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So Mike, uh, I am going to assume that most of our audience has never heard of you or doesn't know you. Uh, so with that said, why don't you tell us about who you are, where you come from, how you came up in business and you know what led you to where you are today? Well, I grew up in Chicago and moved to New York right after I graduated from college. I started, Jeff, as a political pollster, working for candidates who wanted to be elected to office, uh, an audacious congressman named Ed Koch, who wanted to be the mayor of New York. I worked for Bill and Hillary Clinton, um, Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton at, when he was president, Hillary Clinton in her Senate campaign, and um, unfortunately when she tried to be president, Mike Bloomberg in New York. And what I learned is that I could take the lessons from the campaign trail and apply it to business that business people were, were facing the same types of issues that candidates were, where uh, uh, they were you know, being attacked, that it was a, a head-on battle, one versus another. And unlike politics, where you only have to win once every four years, and business, you have to win every day. So I took those lessons that I learned on the campaign trail about messaging and persuasion and targeting, and I brought it into business. But that's just where I started. I then, as data became more and more available, I, I took my polling expertise and went into analytics. So no longer did I have to ask people questions and get answers. I was able to use uh, artificial intelligence, topic modeling, and other uh, different types of data collection to collect data on how consumers behave and what were they purchasing and customer um, and CRM to really understand how to take data to that next level and that's where I am now with my new firm, decoding data and turning it into momentum for uh, my clients. That's fascinating. And I think that um, as we kind of set the table for this episode, you know, again, and you and I talked about this before we started recording, which was obviously our audience is very much real estate, mostly realtors, real estate agents, uh, probably some mortgage professionals, probably some title and insurance, those sort of things. But you know, I don't think this topic is discussed enough in our industry. And so if you could maybe give us a little bit deeper dive on what it means to decode the data for industries, for businesses, for professionals, and then let's try to take it down the path to our audience. Yeah, well, uh, decoding data into momentum is really, first of all, it starts with being in a momentum mindset. What um, helps people feel that they are sort of moving forward, right? Momentum is the, is the science of, of movement. So you have, uh, the formula is mass times velocity, right? Mass is how big something is, velocity is the speed, it's, it's traveling. And so you have to be in that momentum mindset and understand in today's world, what does momentum mean for brands, for products, for people? And there's five, key drivers of momentum. Okay, carry on. You ready? Yep. Uh, one, 
is uh, disruption. Uh, the second is innovation. The third is polarization. The fourth is stickiness. And the fifth is social impact. And, you, and in the momentum mindset, we look at those five drivers. So disruption is when you're doing something completely differently. And um, your industry, real estate, the rest of the world has been upended by massive uh, uh, disruption. Um, in, in the residential side, probably for the good. And on the commercial side, really probably for the bad. Right. Um, and, and, we'll, and we can talk about that. Then there's innovation of doing something uh, a little bit better and having something that people desire, uh, creating that uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out, and that's innovation. Polarization is, is in political terms, we would have said that's targeting. Uh, but polarizing is know who your customer is, know who your audience is, and know who they're not. Uh, absolutely essential for real estate. To, uh, when you, as you go through design, as you go through architecture or locations or what have you, very important. The fourth is uh, stickiness, and that's what's memorable about your, uh, about your brand, about your topic, about your issue. And then finally, social impact. How is it going to impact uh, the greater good? And so the first, so when I understand, when I start with momentum, I say, are you in the momentum mindset? Do you understand where you are on these five drivers? And that is the starting point, no matter what you're looking at. Okay, so let's just say you take, you bring a client in, uh, do you, I mean, what is it? Is it an, is it, is it, is it an analysis? Um, how do you get, how do you get started and even determining if someone is in a momentum mindset, uh, you know, how do you establish that? How can they determine that for themselves? How can they look in the mirror? For, for, for many people, it, it's having this conversation of explaining the momentum mindset. We then use uh, consumer research uh, which would be you know, market research type information to analyze some situations. And then we created a proprietary tool called our M factor, which measures all conversations that are going on to understand what is the uh, momentum of the conversation or momentum of the topic, momentum of, um, of, the, of the brand. And then we dissect it through those five drivers. Okay, so... Uh, maybe putting in a different way, how can I then, let's just say I'm your client. Yes. What is it that is going to tell me that I have that right mindset in order to kind of proceed forward with, with the five drivers? Well, we look, we look at a specific issue. So are we talking about uh, residential real estate? Yes. For, for instance. Okay. So if we are going to look at the momentum of residential real estate, we would then look at it through those, uh, first we would probably run an M factor and we would see that residential real estate has been the hottest topic for the past year as everybody was quarantining and started talking about their home, how they're improving their home, how they're making their home more comfortable. People have never paid this much attention to their home um, in their whole lives. It was always a place where they spent some time. It was never a place they spent all of their time. We then they make a, an assessment, right? Is the home right for them? Are they going to DIY and make it more comfortable, or do they need more space or something else? And they're going to look for something else. Um, we then look at what are the trends. So one of the major trends that we saw was people moving from urban situations to more suburban uh, situations as people discovered that the benefits of urban living had gone away for a while and that they needed space. Uh, we then looked at some of the sort of innovations that are going on of people are using their, uh, uh, their, their, their uh, backyards, their lawns, for instance, for much more than just looking at a trophy, uh, a green trophy that they've created. That became their outdoor living space and many people were spending more time. So we start to look at all of these different issues and, and how they're affecting of it and how can we best meet uh, the consumer needs all through the momentum mindset. Okay, so in this particular case, we, we established that momentum is 
there's a lot of it, right? The, the business is good. It's healthy. Right. So where do we go from there? How do we, um, then we want to understand, well, let's now project out what are people looking for? What are they, what, what is, what is their ideal? What are the trade-offs that they're making? I don't think the equation is even the equation that they were making before. Uh, interest rates are low. Space is at a premium. Outdoor living is part of it. Uh, you know, deciding just on how close you are to a highway to commute to work or what school district you're in now have different weights in the equation. So we want to understand what are the most important factors in choosing where they're going to live, what types of spaces have momentum, and what we'll see is people are looking for larger plots, they're looking for a suburban, they don't feel like they need to be uh, commutable to a, a city location because they don't see themselves commuting five days a week anymore. They see maybe they're going to be commuting uh, two or three times. Uh, proximity to airports, uh, suddenly not as important either. And all of this we can see in our consumer research, as well as we can see in our M factor and the forces that are, are impacting it. And so like I have a, I have several clients where they're pre-pandemic, they were hyper-focused on the amenities within the uh, within the residential real estate that they had. What were the, if it was rental, what was the, uh, what were the countertops? What was the refrigerator? What were the moldings and what have you? Post-pandemic, some of those aesthetics go down in, in, uh, in what's important to them. And they're looking for outdoor space that they can leverage, where they can socialize, where they can take out their dog. And so we see, we see people's priorities change over time. Okay, so okay. once we establish this data, we establish um, these metrics of, of what the consumer is doing, Yes. what do I do with it at this point? Now, how do I use this to build my business or grow my business? Um, well, so are we talking about, for if, if we're leasing space um, in, in non-urban areas, we're going to use it to target and maybe... Uh, how do we attract uh, different types of uh, tenants that will pay us more rent that are looking for, uh, how will we redesign our space? What amenities that we'll talk about? So the top amenity might've been a clubhouse where everybody could socialize and have a party. Well, not the, maybe that's not the top amenity anymore. Um, per, Perhaps it's more of a, a, a fire pit where people, you know, several fire pits along the property where people can gather. And so we'll be able to help prioritize what's important to your target audience and then allow you to take it forward. A lot of people in real estate, it's a funny industry. They, um, they like the A-B testing model. They, they see what one person says. They try something out. If it doesn't work, they go to something else. And it always sort of blows my mind of like, they, they always use uh, test and learn. And I'm like, why don't you just learn and, 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 and sort of get the advantage of having that knowledge before you start so that you can maximize your occupancy rate or you can maximize your rentals or you can reduce your churn. Like you don't have to test and learn. People are willing to at, uh, answer questions. You can observe data to make uh, uh, changes. Do you, and I don't want to get up too far off topic, but do you think that has anything to do in real estate with that? It's such a competitive world. Uh, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I would say compared to most industries, when you, when you're looking at entrepreneurs, salespeople that are branding, that they are, that they're there, even though they all work for a brokerage, they're basically fending for themselves. And therefore, do you think that the test and learn uh, mindset comes from, I got to act quick. I got to, I got to beat uh, Sally at the brokerage down the street. I got to be out ahead. Right. Um, and they just don't feel like it's almost like get rich quick. It's like, they don't have the time to feel like that they, that they can learn. Yeah. I, I think you nailed it. I mean, there's a perception that they don't have time, that there's some immediacy. There's also a bit of arrogance that comes with real estate because sometimes they think they know better. And nobody knows better than the tenant than the tenant. And, and, and so they, they learn over a three month, six month, 12 month period when they could have known this information going in or in a highly competitive dynamic 
uh, they can sort of uh, understand what the competitive strengths are of, of, of what the other building is and then do theirs differently. So I we do a ton of research now for companies who want to get that competitive edge. It's never going to be perfect and you can always lower the price. I mean, right, that's the easiest way in real estate. But the question is, how do you raise the price? And so raising the price, people want, are willing to pay more for things that they believe have momentum. And it's no different in real estate. If you think that's the hot property, if you think that's the hot location, you're gonna be willing to pay uh, more to become part of it. And so we all know that momentum in real estate is, um, uh, is, is, is true. Uh, a neighborhood gets hot, a building gets hot, everybody wants to be there, prices go through the roof. And when something loses momentum, you can't give it away. And so momentum is very real in the um, in your industry. Okay, so let me do this, I, and 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my the audience that uh, we didn't talk about this beforehand. So I'm gonna pose a couple of questions at Mike okay. here and see how he reacts to them because I'm gonna pretend like I'm a client and I've read your book and I've I've heard you on some podcasts and. I want you to help me figure out how I can stand above, how I can differentiate, right? Because this it. is what you do. So uh, the first one is this. Uh, we are in a world where uh, every single, I'm a buying agent, I'm a buyer's agent, and every house I take my buyers to, there is a ton of activity. There's 15 to 20 offers. How in the hell can I take any kind of data and improve my positioning for my buyer so I can increase my odds on winning that offer. And not, don't say just, well, offer more money because that's the obvious, right? Um, what would you say to that number one scenario? Well, the, well, the first thing I I'd want to know is what is, I would want to know about the seller. Like what is important to the seller? Are they just looking for the top Price? Are they looking for a certain type of? Um, uh, are, are they looking for a cash deal? Are they willing to take a contingency? What's their their timeline? Like you have to do your homework. In in that situation, I'd want to know uh, offers that they've rejected. I'd want to, uh, as a buyer agent, I'd like to talk to the seller agent and say, hey, what are they? What are their criteria that they're looking for so that we can maximize it? Oftentimes, it's not. The highest price. It doesn't always go. There's a lot of self-identification that goes on, and so the research that you can do there is is to present yourself um, as the ideal um, as the ideal buyer. And so that research, and then understanding what other homes have gone and why they've gone, can really give you a sense of what's going on in that community. It's interesting. I, and I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know the answer to this, but I don't know how many buy, buyers agents. I think agents in general, it's a it's a copycat world. Right. It's a copycat industry. Like they watch somebody doing something on social media and then we copycat them. You hear about, I mean, I think that's why uh, real estate spikes like it does and like it has, because that's just, that's just, they don't think to what do what you just suggested. They just say, hmm, competitive, 10 offers, we got to be high, right? No, or we got to be I, quick. Wait, I, and I think, um, I'll tell you what I think is the smartest, is if you see that an area has momentum, you need, it, I, I would say, like, I would advise your client of, hey, if there's 15 offers here, if you're not willing to be the highest offer, then why don't we try to find what place is going to be hot next? And if, you're will, if they're willing to do that, sometimes they have their heart set, they've got to be a certain place. But real estate is a total momentum business. And then when it goes away, no one can explain it. Um, I'm doing this interview from Vail, Colorado. I am amazed at how this market swings up and down. It's not really that there's any more, uh, any more uh, 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 places available. They just go up and down based on momentum of how people feel. If they're, if they're feeling... Uh, if they're feeling optimistic and good about themselves, they, they get 2,000 square foot. If, they, if they're not, they get 1,500 square foot. Same exact place, same exact barn. So this is vacation property, but we're seeing this now uh, in the New York real estate. The New York real estate suburban market was absolutely dead 
You couldn't, all the millennials, they said they wanted urban living, they wanted to be near their Starbucks. No, it's just completely swung stuff, stuff, the houses that couldn't be sold for two years go in two days over asking because now they realize the benefits of outdoor space, of what it's going, uh, that they're not going to have to commute into New York City anymore. And it's completely changed the dynamic. Interesting. It's interesting. So, okay. So that's, that's scenario number one. Number two, yeah. uh, I am a listing agent predominantly. Yeah. And there's not a lot of inventory. So once again, uh, fighting for that next listing or finding that next listing is become very strategic and, and challenging. How would you suggest or what could I do maybe differently that you would think of to help me go find more listings? Oh, th that's an easier scenario, actually. I think you have a lot more. I think you're more in control than when you were the buyer's agent. Um, in that you've got to be the guy. You have to be the person who has momentum that people want to be with. Um, and that social media plays a huge role. You cannot over promote yourself on social media. It is statistically impossible. The way that the algorithms work, not everybody will see. You need to optimize your social media. You need to um, optimize your search engine optimization. And, um, and be on all channels and exude confidence and success and that um, you, are the, you are the broker with momentum. I love that. So that, that, and, and, and people, are, you cannot overdo it because it's not possible in real estate to overwhelm either uh, on either side of the equation. Uh, frequency and positioning is absolutely everything. So first of all, I didn't, uh, tell him to say that folks. And so our audience knows me, Mike, as like a social media savant. I love it. Okay. Um, I breathe it. I do a lot with social media. We teach it. We just, we've got a lot of different side businesses with social media. So I love that you said that. And this is coming from, you know, I, again, the way I just the way I introduced you is somebody who um, I, I would consider more of a, a data nerd, right? So typically right. those personalities are not so much like that I from the disc personality and have this big brand and personality on social media. But it's interesting that you recognize the importance of that. And you said something that a lot of people second guess all the time. I don't want to annoy my audience. I don't know. I, I don't think I should talk too much about whatever. Um, and you just said it, you cannot over promote yourself. So I'd love to hear yeah. it from your perspective because Clearly, you work for some massive names, right? The Clintons and Bloomberg and, and so on. So what, what is your mindset on that and from a strategy perspective? And again, put, your, put yourself in our shoes as in the real estate world. Uh, what does that look like to you? Um, I, you have to, having a, a strong presence on social media exudes confidence. Your industry is a confidence industry that uh, where, where your knowledge, your expertise, your relationships are the absolute key to your, to, to your business. And so momentum begets momentum, right? Even in physics, taking an object that is uh, uh, stationary and getting it going takes a hell of a lot of work. And so you, in, in real estate, you want to keep the velocity, you want to keep everything moving as fast as you can, as often as you can, so that people feel that confidence and know that they're with someone who's gonna get it done. On either side of the equation, real estate is unusually emotional. For as, as transactional as it is, and how much it can get dissected and how much are you paying per square foot, for some reason, it's just all emotion. And momentum is the type of momentum that we're talking about is emotion. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I mean, um, on the commercial side, I think it's different. On the commercial side, I think it's a little bit more uh, rational. You know, I this is what I need. I have this many employees. I need this much parking. I, you know, I need access. But, but residential, I don't know, people um, make judgments based on sometimes nothing more than how it strikes them. Almost. So you've got to you've got to influence that with the confidence sure. to help them make that choice.
So as, as it relates to a specific real estate strategy, um, do you recommend, like, again, let's just assume I'm a client and I'm coming to you and you're telling me this, all this for the first time. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, so, so does that mean that I should be uh, in constant education mode? Should I be, should I be vomiting stats, uh, market stats all the time? Uh, should I just be sharing more of my personal life so they know, like, and trust me? Like, where should I go with this strategy in your opinion? I, I, it's interesting. I was just writing a ratio, three to one. Uh, three to one, um, three should be personal, relatable, so they can connect with you. One should be hard facts. And that's, and that's about the ratio. Because again, the confidence is not going to come from that, do you know your stuff? I would think many people know their stuff. The, do, I, do, do I find him in, informative? Do I want to work with him? Is this someone who shares my, my vision and my values? You want to make that to so the three to one ratio works extremely well. I love it. I love it. I didn't know the answer, by the way, that he was going to give me there. Um, Mike, we actually, we say 80, 20. There is no like, oh, there's no, yeah. there's no, there's no, there's no scientific. That's four data. to one. That's, there we go. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 it's kind of personal preference, but it's good to know that you have the same wavelength as we do as well. Cause it's true. And when and we know it, so I was just curious to get it. So all right. So now, obviously, we've talked about this, this data, and I don't want to get away. I don't want to get too far away from another topic that I definitely want to talk about. But before we go away from it, um, is there anything else that, that you would like to offer uh, when it, as, it, as it pertains to your business for, for the Decode M um, and, and kind of how it works? And if somebody was, let's just say they're interested or they're still struggling to understand how they could use it in the real estate world. Is there anything else that you would you would like to say about that? The most important is to understand your target, to understand what is your what is the objective. And so our we're able to understand what is going to help you succeed in your business and what are the forces that are going to knock you out of business. That's I, I think people don't spend enough time thinking about who are my who's my real competition. And, and so in, the, um, uh, in, in, in all situations, we have to look at what are the forces that, are, that are, are fighting against you. So right now, one of the forces is this desire for outdoor space, not as a trophy, but as livable. So livable outdoor space is going to be a force that you have to uh, deal with and, 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 and understand. The second force that you might want to understand is environmentalism. You might want to understand um, the ability of what school systems you're in. And so we, all of those things go into play as we start to help our clients understand what's going to help you succeed in business, what are the forces that are going to knock you out, and how can you keep your momentum going? With that said, what do you think were some of, as, as we talk about kind of coming out of the pandemic and, and going back to 2020, what were some of those um, momentum drivers from 2020, some of the things that are causing momentum, because I've read enough about you to, to, to read that, you know, you really believe that last year uh, is going to really change a lot of things for a lot of industries. And I know ours is one of them. So how would you answer that question to say how 2020 is now reshaping um, our future? The number one change is it's going to, it's obviously affecting how, how we work how we live, how our kids go to school. So the, all those three things are, are disrupted and we don't, we don't know the end to see what, what's coming. And, and, but we do know that there'll be several versions of a hybrid model. So let's, let's, that's all I think anybody would say that. The, the biggest change is direct to consumer without a middleman is the single biggest change. So how we shop, how we buy, how, brands relate to us. We're in a DTC world. This has all been accelerated. We won't have, other than the grocery store, we won't have shops that have inventory. We'll have showrooms. We won't have to go out to the, um, to the mall as much unless we want to be entertained. If we really want to purchase stuff, we'll do it online or we'll go to a store to make sure they have the size and the color and it will be shipped to us. The second major change, so DTC number one, Second major change is we seek comfort now in everything that we do. We want a comfy home. We want a comfy outdoor. We want 
we're, people now realize that they can enjoy, that they, that they enjoy a comfortable life. And, um, and, and so the, the amenities of home are no longer just aesthetic, but they also um, have to be very functional. And I think we're gonna see a, a, a major uh, change in that. Also how we travel is gonna be different. I don't, I don't know what the future of hotels look like because do we really wanna be in a lobby with a bunch of strangers? having a drink? I don't, do we want to take elevators with people that we don't know? It's going to be a while. I wrote a um, up and down that, do we really want to go to movie theaters anymore? Like, uh, yes, maybe if we want to see the Avengers and be part of something major, but what's what's the point? We're, we are so happy with HBO Max and Disney Plus and Paramount Plus and Netflix. Can you, you know, like you can't, go to Netflix in the movie theater, what's the point? The movie theater can come to us. So those lifestyle changes, I think have a significant impact on real estate because proximity to those types of things are no longer important. So what would you say is, or, or, or some of the things that we should really be focused on as a result of, of those you know, reinventions, if you will, or, or those changes or the evolution um, that we should be focusing on as we move forward in 2021 and beyond? We should be focused on entertainment because we know that entertainment's not going away. So we need to understand what the new focus of entertainment will be. We should be very focused. Americans learned about outdoor space. It was something they completely took for granted, particularly I grew up in Chicago. There was no outdoor space from November until May. Like it's, didn't exist unless you wanted to freeze out in Soldier Field. I mean, you know, there was there was nowhere to go. So now it's very acceptable to be in outdoor space when it's cold. And, and so what are the things that are going to be uh, around that? How do we deal with our children? It, it's not, it, it, are we still going to send them off uh, every day to, to school for five days a week and they'll be gone all day? Those are real questions that don't have definitive answers yet, but have to be factored in. So how does that, how do you relate that back though to, you know, you've mentioned now outdoor space several times, Yeah. you know, and I'm thinking to myself as we're talking, like, okay, maybe that needs to be a focal point of my content on the social media. Now, maybe yeah. I need to be doing something and, 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 and showing more examples. Maybe when I'm doing walkthroughs at an open house or a new listing, I need to be featuring that and not the kitchen, not the bathroom. Um, how do I use this? How do I use this to my advantage? You would be so smart in your walkthroughs to show all the access points to outdoor space. Right? It's not just the front door. What, how do you get out to the patio? How do you get out to the, um, uh, is, if, if it's multi-level? I think you're exactly right. The way that we talk about space differs. Um, what, the way that we present a home or a neighborhood or uh, a, 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 a building has to change because consumers are for are ever, if we're in a, if, if, I don't know if you deal with, um, you know, apartment buildings with several floors, but you're going to have to explain the elevator and you're going to have to explain the lobby for a long time. <laughs> like that's, yeah. that's not, that's not going away anytime soon. You're going to have to uh, talk about the ways that you're um, protecting and keeping everyone safe. My, uh, one of my most significant clients runs water parks and you would think that water parks are a, a place during the pandemic which people would have avoided. And it was just the opposite because uh, they wanted safe places to play with their kids. Chlorine kills COVID uh, uh, virus. And so the most important message that they could put in the marketplace was not how great the water park, it's what are the safety uh, procedures and protocols that they put into place to keep everybody safe while they play. Yeah. And I think in real estate, it's going to be the same thing. You have to communicate how you're keeping everyone safe during this so that you can get on to the floor plan and uh, the amenities and, and what have you. But the number one criteria is, am I safe here? Can I trust my neighbors? Hmm. So it's almost like 
you need to you need to sh shift the way you think about how you're marketing properties, for example, and lead with safety, lead with outdoor space, lead with those sort of things that the data tells me now has become the most important thing to the consumer. Hundred percent. You will not go. You will not go wrong with talking about the. Uh, 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 talking about the space, the procedures, the protocols, the neighbors, and then you will, the bar will come down and then you can talk about everything else that you would have normally spoken about. Yeah. It's like, it's like two years ago, we were talking about, uh, like you said, uh, urban living, right. Or we yeah. were talking about school districts because that's what mattered. Um, yeah. And so it's almost more of a, to me, this, this kind of drives home the point that you know, real estate agents, salespeople, doesn't matter what industry you're in, but if you're not paying attention to these drivers, to these data drivers, you're basically going to outdate yourself and your message is going to fall on deaf ears because you're not staying hip to what you're not paying attention to what the consumer actually wants, I think is the bottom line. Yeah, particularly in multifamily, right? Maybe a little bit easier if it's single family. Uh, it's, it's easier in, in single family. I would emphasize all the different doors to outdoor space and all the different ways it could be utilized. And where's the, you know, if, if I'm an agent, I'd be like, oh my God, wouldn't this be a beautiful place to put a fire pit? Yeah. <laughs> he, he, you know, um, that would some, some ways to, to use the space. This would be a tremendous patio mm -hmm. to, to entertain, like things like that, that are going to be with us for a long time. I love it. I love it. So there's one word that I haven't brought up yet that I've read several places um, is the word moonshot. And, yeah. and you use that uh, in some of your own personal marketing. You talk about revealing winning moonshots. Um, and you even, and you, even uh, you know, like use examples of, you know, Elon Musk and Lyft and Facebook and things like that. Uh, what, so if somebody's, you know, they're, they're going off and I'm sure this happens occasionally, they're probably Googling our guest and wanting to learn about it. What the hell is a moonshot besides a, a, a long home run in baseball? Uh, a moonshot is, is a vision that's out in the future that inspires people and motivates them to achieve it. Uh, it a, a, a good moonshot can't be so far out there that people think it's not going to happen in their lifetime, but it has to be far, um, far enough outside that it doesn't feel incremental. Like, Jeff, the biggest change is we've been in this incremental world for the past, I don't know, it feels like we've been... It really feels for the past, um, since, since the financial crisis of 2008, we've been incremental in, and, and, um, and so now we need to have moonshots that are attainable. Like the old school moonshot was something, a lofty company vision that didn't really apply to me. A, um, a, a, a moonshot now is something that I can actually achieve and align to everybody in your organization that we can, yeah, we can get there. Give me an example of a moonshot that would be recognizable to everyone in the last several years. Um, well, we're, you're actually living, we are living in the moonshot of moonshots right now. Um, and, and, and I don't want to get political, but the US government said that we would, that we could vaccinate everybody within a year. And that was, nobody thought that was achievable and they're going to make it, you, you know, uh, whether it's Trump or Biden or whoever, whatever side of the aisle, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, we will, we got a vaccine in record time. People are going through the process of getting their shots and everybody is on board to, we can beat COVID. That was never, that would have never have been believable. That would have uh, been unattainable before. And that, and that was a moonshot. Now, look, um, when President Trump said it, he said so many other things around it, it kind of got lost, which is unfortunate because it didn't inspire comments. I think as President Biden has been straight talking to us, I think people are getting on board that this is possible and that we can, that, that we can go forward. Another moonshot that is now becoming uh, realistic. Uh, I, have you been following uh, electric vehicles? Uh, only... You know, only a little bit. You know, if you, 20 years ago, if we would have talked about everybody, uh, GM only having electric vehicles, you would have said not even remotely possible. They, their CEO has now said that um, over the next 20 years, their whole fleet will be run on electric vehicles and that uh, there will be no more combustible, 
gasoline power engines. People believe that that's, that's realistic and doable. And the other moonshot that, um, <laughs> no, I was gonna make a funny joke. The other moonshot that Do the it. Bears, Do it. I think the Bears, if they ever get a quarterback, <laughs> will, <laughs> might actually win the Super Bowl again. That's, Russell, that's, Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson's that answer. Is he, is he going? Uh, that, I don't know. I was actually watching ESPN while I was working out this morning, and that's what they were talking about. They're ta- the Bears are desperate. I'm a, I'm a Chicago Bears fan. If they could get a quarterback, maybe they could win a Super Bowl. That's another moonshot. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, we're, you're going to take us back to the and, – and sorry to digress on this if you're not a sports fan, uh, our audience, but um, you're going to take us back to the uh, Saturday Night Live days with the Bears and, 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 <laughs> and all those predictions. That's, it's, that's but the last time we won was 1985. Do you, you know, for Chicago people, they think that was last season. That was like 35 <laughs> years ago. So that, was do, a, that, that was a that was a that was a historic one, though. I mean, that's a memorable that's a memorable year. That was a memorable team. I don't know. I mean, Tom Brady goes from one team to another and he wins. Do you, oh, whoever thought that winning Super Bowl was one player? That was a moonshot, probably. That was a complete moonshot. Yeah, <laughs> I love. It. Okay, so so let me challenge you with one final thing before we wrap up. Okay. Um, and and you may, again, you may not have thought about this, but but give me something that you would consider a moonshot in real estate. A moonshot in real estate, and not not a past one, a current one, looking into the future. Um, I'm I, look. I, I don't know. Are you guys more focused on commercial real estate or residential? Residential. Residential. Um, the, the biggest moonshot, I, which I think is, is where we're having now, is that um, the suburbs and the exurbs uh, go back to their vitality. That, that, it, it, you know, that, that this major swing from urban to suburban is real and sustained, and that the growth uh, outside these cities can actually happen, that we can get the, uh, a, a more sustainable life and that it'll be more uh, rural than urban. So does that mean, so decode that now, uh, no pun intended, decode that for what I should be doing in my business to properly prepare myself to maximize you know, my success with that potential moonshot? I think we should be, we should be, we should be preparing for uh, non-urban living. That we should, that we, that, that the amenities that we thought was so uh, near and dear are now going to switch to uh, a, a much more. Um, uh, uh, I want, I don't want to say like uh, rural, but a much more suburban mindset, which had been dead for as long as I mean, at least in all the places I've lived, has been dead for a while. Yeah. Um, and then the second major thing, which I think is happening, is um, the exodus in uh, from cities like my city in New York to other parts of the country, and we're yeah. seeing the population uh, really growing. I mean, I, I here in Colorado, I mean, it's Denver, absolutely uh, on fire. Salt Lake City, absolutely on fire. New Orleans, on fire. Like those are all places that had seen slow growth and now are just booming again. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. That's excellent. That's that's good stuff. I mean, I think this is a this is and, and I kind of predicted this in the beginning. This is going to be an interesting conversation about things that we don't always think about. We typically have real estate specific guests, and I like not having that because it it gets all of us outside of that comfort zone to think a little bit differently. So, Mike, uh, answer me this. First of all, I'd like you to kind of give some closing thoughts, but then also. Uh, you know, where do you want to direct our audience if they want to learn more? Where is the best place to get maximum momentum? Uh, where is the best place to connect with you? Uh, but but before you give me that, tell me, tell, give me, give me your your kind of summary uh, or your closing you know, departing thoughts for this podcast. I think you're in the center of this storm right now. I don't I don't think there's anything more top of mind to Americans now than where they live, how they live, um, and the time that they spent where they're living. It's never been more important. People spend a lot more time thinking about their home now than where they're gonna go on vacation. Their vacation is now in their home and they are and they are making it better. With interest rates being historically low as they are now and access uh, to, to, to mortgages uh, being, being such, I think we need to, this is not a, uh, a micro trend from the pandemic. This is a five to 10 year 
change. We are not like one of the moonshots I didn't say is we're not going to moonshot back to urban. Like this is this is the shift. People have um, tried a new lifestyle and they're enjoying it. And all of my clients are actually preparing for that. So if you look at um, uh, what the lows of the world are doing to help with DIY, if you look what companies like Scotts are doing to help you enjoy your lawn more, if you look at um, what's happening, the world has fundamentally shifted uh, in this direction and it will be um, uh, a trend that we just have to ride. And so communicating to people um, about the safety and the long-term um, uh, and, and, and making long-term decisions, I think is absolutely uh, critical. It will also be interesting to see what happens with home flipping. Like I, I, I don't have a perspective um, as much on that, but with interest rates being so historically low, I, you know, is that a business? Love it, man. I mean, it's uh, it, to me, to summarize what you just said, it's embrace the new, uh, stop embrace thinking, new. stop thinking that we're going to go back to the norm as you knew it. It's n probably never coming back. Um, I love that. There's, um, and also think about second homes. I'm, I'm, I'm a long-term resident of Vail. I didn't come in and buy it the high, I bought it the low. There's no inventory here. Like it's 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 amazing to me, and, and I'm thinking if there's no inventory here. That means there's no inventory anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so you guys are in the right place. Get the confidence of those people who are looking. Um, it's going to be a second home, not a vacation. That because we need to be safe. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Goes back to your hotel comment. You know, that's 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 where that's where the world is probably going to shift to. It's kind of like uh, camping. You know, all of a sudden, it's a new popular thing to do because you're more spread out, and uh, I think people will appreciate that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, they don't. Right, they're not taking. Right, they're not taking trips to Rome. They're 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 going to Yellowstone Park. Yeah, you know, like they because they because they're in control of their uh, environment. Yeah, it's fascinating, man. This is this has been outstanding. So, uh, where is the best place to connect with you, and where's the best place to uh, get their hands on a copy of this book? Uh, the best, well, the one negative side to the uh, pandemic is all the look, all the local bookstores got knocked out, which yeah. is which is a tragedy. So, Amazon, which we love, is is the place to is to buy it, and it's um, maximum momentum on Amazon.com. And then our website is decode-m.com, D-E-C-O-D-E-M.com is our website. Decode-m.com. Go check it out. Everything is knowable, it says, are your best days ahead. And I think if you, you stuck with us on this one, which you, you better have, and I applaud you for those that did, uh, this, this one should have you thinking a little bit. And um, I, I know it does me because it's always uh, it, it, it's 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 a perpetual desire to stay out ahead. And um, and and as fast as the world is changing nowadays, that's a that's a tough tough nut to crack. Um, and so you know, following and staying connected and and understanding the data uh, is powerful. And Mike, obviously, you've got a beat on that. So I appreciate you sharing today. This has been a fantastic episode. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you. Agents Podcast.